Hello, thank you so much for tuning into my YouTube channel. In today's video, I want to show you how to write your own custom loss function in TensorFlow. Let's get started. As I said in this video, I want to talk about how to write your own custom loss function in TensorFlow. Loss functions are a critical component of training neural networks. They quantify the difference between the predicted output of the network and the actual target values in the training data. The primary goal during training is to minimize this loss, which is achieved through techniques like gradient descent. But why are loss functions so important? They are important for optimization. In other words, loss functions serve as the objective to be minimized during the training process. They guide the model towards making more accurate predictions. They are also important for evaluation, meaning loss functions help in evaluating the performance of the model. A lower loss indicates that the model is performing better. The loss functions are also important for regularization. In other words, loss functions can be designed to incorporate regularization terms which help in preventing overfitting by penalizing large model weights. There are different types of loss functions. They are either regression loss functions or classification loss functions. Some of the regression loss functions are mean squared error or mean absolute error or even Haber loss and some of the classification loss functions are binary cross entropy, categorical cross entropy, hinge loss which is used in SVMs, log loss and so on. But how about custom loss functions? Where can we use them? The following show the places where a custom loss function can be helpful. First is specific problem requirements. Sometimes the problem you are working on may have requirements that cannot be met by standard loss functions. Next is imbalancing data. When you have highly imbalanced data sets, standard loss functions might not be effective. Next is non-standard output distributions. If the output of your neural network doesn't adhere to a standard distribution, a custom loss function might be necessary. Next is incorporating domain knowledge. Custom loss functions allow you to incorporate domain-specific knowledge which can significantly improve model performance. And lastly, error sensitivity. In some cases, you might want to penalize certain types of error more or less than others. Custom loss functions allow you to define these penalties explicitly. Let's go to Python and see how we can design our own custom loss function in TensorFlow. Before we go on to Python, it is necessary to mention that the model we're going to use is the convolutional autoencoder that I've already used in one of my prior videos. As you can see here, in that video, I used the convolutional autoencoder for image denoising. Now I want to write my own custom loss function in that model. Let's go to Python. Okay, here's the code for this video. I've already explained this model as I already told you guys in one of my prior videos. But I'm just going to briefly go over each line quickly. This is where the data set is imported. And the data set is going to be MNIST data so that the model learns to go from the noisy image to the denoised image. And this is where I'm putting together the convolutional autoencoder. This is a deep convolutional autoencoder, as you can see, because it has more than four layers. And this is where the autoencoder is completed. And right before compiling the model, I'm going to be writing my own custom loss function, as you can see here. I'm going to be naming it my loss fn, which is my loss function. And it needs two inputs. One of them is the data predicted by the model, and one of them is the ground truth. The loss function that I've written is binary cross entropy loss function, which is good for denoising models. So right before compiling your model, you have to write your own loss function here. And then we're going to be returning the output. You could have anything. You could have a simple Euclidean distance or anything else here, and then you could output it. So when you compile your model, you use your own custom loss function here, as you can see here. And then right after that, you fit your data to your model. Then you specify the number of epochs and the batch size and everything else. And this is where I'm going to be saving my model, but I'm going to talk about this more later. I'm going to show you guys how you could save and then later on use your saved model in TensorFlow. But as I said, I'm going to be talking about this later in one of the next videos, not here. And then I'm going to be showing you guys a summary of the model. And then I'm going to be predicting the output of the model for my testing data. And this is where I'm going to be plotting some results. Everything else has been explained in one of my prior videos, but the only thing new was how to write your own custom loss function, which is here. So right before compiling your model, you just write your own custom loss function, as I explained here. Okay, let's run it and see what happens. So it's going to go through 10 epochs. So the run is complete. 
This is the summary of the model. As you can see, this is the output, and the model has done a pretty good job denoising these noisy images. So it was very easy to write your own custom loss function, but it could be very helpful in so many situations. This custom loss function is a little bit complicated, but you could write your own very simple custom loss functions as well. And you could access this code using the link in the description section of the video as well. And that's about it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it and you were able to get something out of it. If you liked it, I would appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel and also share the video with your friends. Thank you so much and have a nice day.